all right guys so now let's start okay so now let's start with a very 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 important topic in python and that topic is called data input now before i start with data input answer a very simple question uh, using which statement you do data output in python so in python data output is done using the print statement okay data output is when you display something on the monitor so when you are using the print statement to display something on the monitor you are doing data output and what is data input so data input means taking the data from the user now before i even start with data input i want to tell you something i want to give you one very uh, important suggestion advice and that is i have already given you some programs in which i have given you program for data input also now in the next few minutes i will tell you to do a few things on your own so when i'm telling you to do a few things on your own please do not uh, refer the programs which i have already given you those programs are for your future reference what will happen is i'll tell you to do a few things on your own and if you are referring those programs then you may not do the mistake which i want you to do the mistake and if you don't do mistakes you will not learn better remember one thing that nobody is going to check whether you wrote things correctly or not so you will neither be punished nor be rewarded for doing anything correctly or incorrectly okay so don't refer the programs which i gave you okay so let's start with that now <clears throat> what we will do is uh, i'll open i'll open a new shell over here all right and i'm also opening a new window so i hope the shell is in front of you right now and now over here i'll go to file and i will open new file all right so now in front of you you have the shell and you have the editor okay all right so now what we will do is we'll study data input in python now what we'll do is we'll do a demo program over here where we'll assume as if there is an employee and we want to read the employee name the employee code and the employee salary okay so now let's start with reading employee name so first of all what i'll do i'll write a simple print statement i'll write print and within print within print i will write enter enter name okay so what i'm doing is i'm telling the user that you enter the name of the employee now what will happen is after this gets displayed on the monitor a cursor will blink now when the cursor blinks i want the user to enter the name so for that what i will do is i'll create a variable name don't forget in python we don't need to declare the variable and i will use a very simple function called input so input is a function in python using which input is a function in python using which you can take input from the user all right so when i write name equal to input what will happen so let's see that what i will do is i will run this program so run module let me close this i'll run this program run module save so for time being let's say i save it simple plain on the desktop and i click on save let me click on save what went wrong okay so i did not give a name so i give the name let's say input dot py and i click on save all right so on the desktop on the desktop the program got saved and the program is even executing now so see so see now in front of you in front of you you see this enter name enter name all right now over here over here you see a cursor blinking now one small simple thing which i want you to understand tell me one thing the cursor is blinking on the same line or the next line well it is blinking on the next line so what this means is when you write a print statement the print statement will automatically put a slash n after its output so what the print statement has done over here it has displayed enter name and then it automatically gave a slash n and because of that slash n this cursor comes on the next line all right okay now if the cursor is blinking that means the program is expecting some out uh, some input from the user okay 
So let me give some input over here. Let's say the input is Amit Singh. Amit Singh. All right. Now I'll hit the enter key. Now when I hit the enter key, when I hit the enter key, what will happen is this Amit Singh will be taken as input by our program. So basically the input function, listen to me carefully. This input function will read Amit Singh from here and will assign it and will assign it to variable name. Okay. Now when I hit the enter key, see the program terminates. If you see the prompt again, that means the program terminates. Now the question is how do we verify that the input is done correctly? So very simple. Over here, I will write print, print and in parenthesis, I'll write name. So because of that, what will happen is it will be verified. So now see, I'll execute this one more time. I'll execute this one more time. Enter name. Let's say I change the name to Jack Lal. Okay. And I hit the enter key and see, you see Jack Lal again. See, please keep one thing in mind that whatever you see in blue color is the output which the print has generated. Okay. And what you see in black color, it is the input which the user is giving to our program. So this enter name, this enter name was generated by line number one. Then what line number two has done is line number two has read this Jack Lal and line number three is generating this Jack Lal in blue color. Okay. All right. Now over here, we can do one more thing. What one more thing, what we can do is we can combine statement number one and two. Now how we can combine statement number one and two. So what we can do is we can write this way name equal to input name equal to input. And in parenthesis and in parenthesis, I will write this way, enter name. So if I do this, if I do this, what is happening over here is I am removing the need. I am removing the need of using the print statement. So now this input function, this, this input function will perform two tasks. Come on. Can you tell me what two tasks? It will do the work of displaying and it will also do the work of inputting. So first it will display enter name and then it will also read the name Jack Lab. But there's one small subtle difference over here. Now what difference I'll show you. Let me uncomment this. Okay. And I'll save this and I'll run the program. It's okay if I use the same variable uh, and if you're getting confused, I'll change the variable name to n. Okay. Now I'll run the program and see what happens. This is the first enter name. The, this is the output generated because of line number one. So I write Amit Singh over here. Amit Singh. Okay. Now I hit the enter key. Now pay attention. Now over here, see Amit Singh is displayed. And this enter name, this, this enter name is the output which is generated by this input statement. Always remember one thing output will be given in blue color. Now, can you tell me one small subtle difference between this print and this input, the way in which they're displaying things? Can you tell me one small difference over here? See, what you should notice is that when you give print, the cursor blinks on the next line. That means over here, over here. Whereas when you give this input, okay, the cursor blinks on, on the same line, on the same line. So this input function, it will definitely display name. It will definitely display name. But what it will not do is it will not bring the cursor on the next line. Okay. It will keep the cursor on the same line. Okay. So this is what the input function does. Now, uh, if you want the cursor, if you want the cursor to be on the next line, what to do? Very simple. If you want the cursor to be on the next line, just put a slash in over here. If you put a slash in over here, the cursor comes on the next line. Okay. So I hope you understood that much. Okay, now again, I'll put this as a comment. All right, and I will save this. I'll save this. Okay, guys. So now over here, what I will do is I will wait one complete one minute for you. Okay, I'll wait one minute for you. One minute is a long time in an, on, uh, in an online live lecture. Now in this one minute, what you will be doing is listen to me carefully. In this one minute, you will ask the user to enter code, C-O-D-E code. Uh, by the way, code means the employee code, like one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever it is. Okay. So you'll ask the user to enter the employee code. Then what you will do, you will increase the value of code by one. Okay. Don't ask me why we are doing that. Just do it. 
so we'll increase the value of code by one and then you will display the increased value so for example you will tell the user enter code user will enter one two three you will increase the code by one it will become one two four and then you will display one two four so come on i'll wait for you for one complete minute and you do this right now right away okay come on start okay guys so <clears throat> so uh if you really did this then uh, you must have come across one mistake you must have come across one mistake now let's understand what uh, problem you must have come across <clears throat> so let's say i create a variable code code and i write code equal to input code equal to input double quotes double quotes enter enter code double quotes enter code all right after that after that now what the statement will do is this will display enter code and apart from displaying enter code it will also read the code from the user now let's say i try to do code equal to code plus one plus one all right and i do print code print code okay now i'll save this i press ctrl s on my keyboard and after saving this i'll run this so i'll click on run <coughs> just a second guys something went wrong one way i'll one i'll just run this one more time so okay all right so now 
requirement. I'll just close this because I want the output to appear a little bit on the up side of the screen. So, all right. So now look, this print line number one is displaying enter name. So I enter some name, let's say Jack Lal. All right, I hit the enter key. Now when I hit the enter key, look, this print on line number three, it is displaying the name Jack Lal. Then line number six, okay, in line number six, what we have done is we have written enter code in input itself. So it will display enter code and the cursor blinks on the same line. So now let's say I type the code one, two, three, okay. Now I hit the enter key and be attentive what will happen. Now when I hit the enter key, you get an error. Now over here, how to read, <coughs> sorry, over here, how to read the error. So first of all, you need to look at the line number so over here it says that the error is in line number seven so look at line number seven this is line number seven code is equal to code plus one here we see the error okay now after that after that it will also tell you that the uh it will tell you that the error is in line number seven which is this one then look at this colon can you see this colon before this colon it will give you it will give you the name of the error so the error which has occurred over here is called type error, data type error. And then to the right of the colon, it will give you a description. So what it is telling you, it is telling you can only concatenate string to string. And in bracket, it, is, it has written not in. Now, what is the meaning of this? So listen to me very, very, very carefully. It's not as simple as it seems. Now, over what happens is in Python, this operator, this operator plus operator, this uh, this operator is a multi-purpose operator now when i say multi-purpose operator what do i mean i mean that depending on the operands listen to me carefully depending on the operands this operator will do either concatenation or addition so what happens is that if both the operands the left operand as well as the right operand the left as well as the right operand if both the operands are numbers then this operator plus operator will do addition Whereas, whereas if both the operands are in uh, are strings, I repeat, if both left and right operands are strings, then this plus will do concatenation, concatenation. Now, over what problem takes place? So listen to me carefully. First thing which you, uh, which you should know is that the assignment operator has least precedence. Okay. So in this statement number seven, what the Python interpreter will do is first, it will come to this addition. Now, when it comes to, the, sorry, I should not say addition, first it will come to this plus symbol. Now, when it comes to this plus symbol, what the Python interpreter will do is, it will check the left side operand, which is the code. Now, tell me, what is the data type of code over here? It is string, not integer. And here, we have made a mistake. See, what happens is, listen to me carefully. Now, I'll tell you one statement. If you want, you can write this statement in your notebook. Okay, very important. By default, Python reads every input as a string. I repeat, by default, Python reads every input as a string. Now, what I mean is, see, you told you, I mean, your program told the user to enter code. Okay, your program told the user to enter code. Okay, look at the left side of the screen. So now what the user has done is the user has entered one, two, three. Now the problem is that when the user enters this one, two, three, Python will read this one, two, three, not as an integer, but as a string. So this statement, statement number six, statement number six, what it will do, it will definitely read code. Statement number six will definitely read code, but it will read code. It will, I mean, it will read one, two, three, not as an integer, but as a string. So after line number six, after line number six, code is equal to string one, two, three. Now comes statement number seven. Now, when the Python interpreter comes across statement number seven, statement number seven looks like this. See carefully. Statement number seven looks like this. So here what happens is, first of all, Python interpreter will check the left side of RAND, that is this code. Now this code is string one, two, three. And if it is string one, two, three, Python will expect this also to be a string. I repeat, Python will expect this also to be a string. 
so now this is a string this is an integer so the operation cannot be done over here and that's why it reports type error all right okay guys so i told you the problem okay if you want you can even copy these comments i'll just wait for a few seconds over here you can copy these comments if you wish to all right so now what is the solution over here guys so listen i'll just erase these comments uh, just for more clarity okay now the solution is very simple what i will do is i'll write code equal to code equal to now in python there is a built-in function called int i hope you remember yesterday we had studied a built-in function called str in the previous lecture in the previous videos so that way there is a function called int what this function int will do is it will take one argument let's say code and will convert it to an integer very simple so this function int function int what it will do it will take this code where this code look carefully where my pen is moving where this code is currently is currently a string and that string will be converted to integer so before statement number seven before statement number seven or i will say that this way at the end of statement number six at the end of statement number six code is equal to string one two three and at the end of statement number seven at the end of statement number seven code is equal to integer one two three so the function int has converted has converted uh code from string to integer and now things will work correctly now what will happen very simple now look at statement number eight now in statement number eight the python interpreter looks at this plus when it looks at this plus what it will do is it will check the left operand so now the left operand is of what data type integer one is of what data type integer so now this plus will act as addition and you will see the answer 124 so let me execute this so enter name let's say jack lal enter code one two three and there you go one two four all right now guys again i'll wait one minute for you and in this one minute what you should do is you should read you should read the salary of the employee but the salary of the employee must be a floating point number floating point number something like 500.5 and then what you should do is you should uh, add 100 rupees to that salary and you should display the updated salary okay i repeat read the salary which should be a floating point number add 100 rupees to it and then display it and one more small thing which i'll tell you try to do it on your own see over here what we can do is we can even combine statement number six and seven that means we could have written this int function, int function year only, year only. All right. So try to do something like that in this salary segment. Come on, just come on, start doing. If you did not understand that combination part, leave it. Just read the salary. Okay. Add 100 rupees and display it. Come on, I'll wait for a minute over here. Start.
Okay, right. So now you are telling the user to enter the salary. Okay. So uh, let's say he enters 500.5. Now again, the same problem. When uh, Python will read 500.5, it will read 500.5 as a string, not as a floating point number. So can you tell me what statement you must have written over here? You can write something like salary, salary equal to, come on, take a guess, float, float salary. So what this function float will do is, it will take this salary, which is a string, and will convert it to data type float, and will again store it in salary. All right. Now over here, you can finally do one more thing. What you can do is you can combine line number 11 and 12, and here onwards, we'll always write statements in this manner. What manner? So see carefully. What I will do is I will introduce the float function over here. Float. And uh, over here also, over here also, I'll write, I'll put one back. Okay. So now what I'm doing over here is one simple thing. I'm using a technique over here called nesting of functions. I repeat, I'm using a technique over here called nesting of functions. By the way, nesting means one inside another. So over here, over here what I'm doing is I'm putting the function input inside function flow. Now, whenever we do nesting of functions, what will happen is the inner function will be executed first. So first the input function will execute. What the input function will do is it will read the salary and this part, this part, see where my pen is moving or let me highlight it. This part will get replaced by what user has entered, but it will be a string. For example, 500.5 string. Now that string will get converted to float and will be stored in salary. So finally, let's execute this program. So now I click on run. So I click on run module. It says enter name. Okay, look at the bottom of the screen. Let's say I just said JL. Enter code 123. I get 124, 500.5, and I get 600.5. So, guys, this was a program on data input. If you understood this program, so now you are ready to read data from the user. All right. Now, the next topic which we are going to do is the concept of blocks, which is very, very, very important. All right. Now I'll end this session over here and within five minutes, I'll start with a new session where we'll study blocks in Python. Horribly important. Stay tuned.